Good evening and welcome to Sunset News on this Tuesday evening. As always, we bring you news, community stories, economics, weather and sports. I am Aina Kweo. In the news tonight, Netumbo Nandi Ndaitwa, Vice President this morning, said the history of the 1915 Sem Kubis battle when Germans attacked the Rio Bothbuster community with the intent to wipe them out should be taught in schools. Sem Kubis is commemorated west of Rio Both on the 7th and the 8th of May every year. Chamaima Birkes reports. What could be the population? Today. Yeah. I am informed that that was a day on which the people of this community were surrounded by German troops facing abrupt and massacre. When that was about to happen, the people of these communities first looked at their trees and bows, they endured their heads and pray before God, so that our Creator could spare their lives. Yes. Indeed, God accompanied them and spared the people of God in this community, yes. and spare the people of God in Namibia. Today we are here able to tell and commemorate the past of our history, which is an important contribution to our endeavor of nation building. A nation without a history is not a nation. And a nation with a history which is not known is just as good as if there is no history. This 109 commemoration of seven papers organ organized by generations of the rare book master is a testimony that God does indeed keep his covenant for a thousand generations and he will continue to keep them as long as this earth of ours is in the In our next story, the city of Ventuk yesterday said that the 10% reduction in water usage is necessary during winter months to maintain the required 5% savings target. As we transition into the winter months, it is crucial to maintain our water consumption efforts. This measure aims to offset the anticipated increase in water consumption during the summer season. In an announcement on Facebook to resident, it said that according to the city's water management plan, they are obligated to conserve at least 10% of water usage under category C conditions, which indicates water scarcity. The city, however, said that despite settling a weekly consumption of 422,877 kiloliters, the actual consumption of from the 30th of April to 6th of May stood at 492,399 kiloliters. This was 16% above the target. These figures indicate that our water consumption in exceeds the permitted limits. Let us redouble our efforts to conserve water and minimize water intensive activities. Remember, saving water translates to lower costs. To reduce your water usage, please inspect your property for leaks and promptly repair them. Every drop, every drop rather, saved contributes to our collective conservation efforts, the city said. The major share of the water supply of uh, Ventuk stems from a three dams system, namely the Omatako, the Swakopod, and Von Batch dams that store and accumulate surface water during the rainy season when the rivers are carrying water. According to the latest dam bulletin issued by Nam Water, the average level of these three dams now stands at 18% compared to last season when it was at 37.2%. 
percent. The Swako port is at level. 35.3%, the phone batch dam is at 11.3% full and the Omatako is at 0.3% full. The bulletin noted that transfer of water took place from Swako port to phone batch and from northern sources to phone batch. Now on to our next story. Namibia has secured funding exceeding two billion Namibian dollars for enhancing its transmission network and incorporating renewable energy into its grid. The World Bank has approved Namibia's first ever energy project valued at 2.6 billion Namibian dollars, named the Transition Expansion and Energy Storage Project. This initiative aims to bolster the country's transition network reliability and facilitate greater integration of renewable energy. The project comprises of three key components developing the second house Kokobuam transmission line, establishing a utility scale battery energy storage system facility, and providing technical assistance to NAMPOWER for viable renewable energy projects and socio economic benefits enhancement. The TEAS project intends to create create a structured socio-economic framework supporting job creation, skills development, and female employment during project design and implementation. Kahenge Halofu, uh, NAMPOWER's managing director, views this project's approval as a significant step in advancing the approximately 465-kilometer transmission line from Aus to Kokebom. The line, the new line rather, utilizing the efficient 222 series of towers will boost Nampawa's north-south transmission capacity, fostering increased access to variable renewable energy and facilitating regional electricity trading. How Lofu emphasized the importance of the second utility scale BES, um, which will be integrated into the transition network at the Lithops substation in the Erongo region. With a capacity of 45 megawatts to 90 megawatts, the BIS aims to mitigate inrush currents for nearby large mines and store excess energy from upcoming solar photovoltaic, photovoltaic rather, power plants, minimizing grid losses. Expanding the electricity networks and lines in is deemed essential to meet current and future national load requirements, including the demand of a growing population and economy. World Bank Country Director for Namibia, Satu Kakonen praised Namibia's commitment to renewable energy expansion, stating that the project aligns with the country's goal of achieving 85% self-sufficiency and sourcing 70% of energy needs from renewable sources. Namibia's TIS project signifies a significant stride towards enhancing energy infrastructure, integrating renewable energy, and fostering socio-economic development. Moving over to our next story, Bruno Lorenco, a Brazilian national, was arrested in 2022 at Josia Kutako International Airport for smuggling cocaine into Namibia by swallowing 98 cocaine pallets valued at four three hundred and forty three thousand Namibian dollars. He is now appealing his sentence to the High Court, expressing a preference for thirty thousand Namibian dollars a fine over a prison term. According to court documents, Lorenco swallowed the mentioned pallets and transported them to Namibia via Ethiopian L Airlines using his method for smuggling. He was then apprehended at Hosia Kutako International Airport following a tip-off from Brazilian authorities to Namibian authorities regarding their suspicion.
suspicion about him. Lorenko pleaded guilty and was subsequently sentenced by Magistrate J.N. Asino on the 31st of January 2023 to 11 years imprisonment with two years suspended for five years on the usual conditions. He now appeals against his sentence, noting that he has already spent over two years in custody to date, including one year in pretrial incarceration and over one year of the sentence after January the 31st in 2023. Deserved mercy in his appeal, he contends that the judge imposed a harsh sentence without considering his circumstances, especially that he is a 43-year-old and at the time Sorry, especially that he is a 43 years old at the time when he was arrested and that it was his first time offense. He told the court he is a single father who is a single father of two children aged 13 and 18 who live with their mother. He worked as an air conditioner repairman earning about 6,000 Namibian dollars to 7,000 Namibian dollars monthly. His 68-year-old mother is cared for by his 40-year-old sister. Therefore, he believes he deserves some leniency from the court. The court, however, contends that the offense Loren Costens convicted and for which he is sentence is a very serious crime. The case has been postponed to the 14th of June 2024 for judgment and he will remain in custody until then. After the break, we return with our story of the day. Don't go away. Connection. It's in the human touch. The feeling of belonging. It inspires us and empowers us. Creates clarity from complexity. It starts new conversations, unlocks the power of advice, and makes an impact on your life. At Alex Forbes, we pioneer insight to provide you with advice that connects your decisions of today to your impact tomorrow. The Shadi Kongoro Green Scheme Irrigation Project had an income of 7 million Namibian dollars during the past cropping season. This was announced by India Puki Nituamata, Executive Director in the Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform during her visit to Kavango East based Green Scheme on Monday. Nituamata is on a brief visit to the Shadi Kongoro Green Scheme irrigation project with her top management, the deputy executive directors such as Dr. Elijah Ngurare, Dr. Abetina Shilongo, Petrus Nangolo and Masang Mulunga, as well as the head of partnerships and communications from the United Nations uh, World Food Program, Sam Mandela. Have a look. Uh, today, during the briefing, actually, in the last uh, last cropping season, which was uh, October to December, uh, the 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 Shadi Kongoro Green Scheme actually uh, had the, uh, around over seven million um, income and. Uh, over three million of that is actually pure, pure profit. And I was so happy to hear this because uh, everyone, including myself, I started to believe that they are operating at, at a loss. And with this, it's just motivating that if we can put everything in place in terms of um, machinery, is everything is running properly, if we make sure that uh, we cut costs, especially on electricity bills, these green schemes will be running on their own or without uh, any injection from the state or from uh, anyone else.
shortly after the break we return with our community talk. The Agenda is a weekly national affairs interview program hosted every Sunday by Namibian Sun editor Toivon Jabela, featuring a panel of high-profile newsmakers, analysts and experts. The Agenda aims to reach high-end news consumers seeking informed understanding of national issues. This show is broadcasted on NTV, 1up2.com and the Namibia Media Holdings Facebook platform. The Agenda focuses on interviews where we put the nation in the hot seat. Contact agenda at synergy.com.na to get your product and service in the hot seat. The Agenda, focused on today's conversation. In our community talk tonight, uh, Loki Grobler, the principal of Moria Private School, expressed uh, how excited they are to be hosting next year's NAPSO Sports Weekend at Ocho in Kunene region. He mentioned uh, that they are working on improving their facilities uh, to host the event come next year, and that would be NAPSO. Have a look. Good morning, dames and gentlemen. I will... Eerst in sy geleentheid gebruik om vir privaatskoel El Nathan sê baie dankie vir hierdie winner van een naweek wat jylle weer eens vir ons aangebied het. En jylle het net weer eens gewys, jylle het het goed gedoen en baie dankie daarvoor vir een naweek van lekker saamkeier en saamspeel. En dan vir my zin wil ons sê baie dankie vir die geleentheid dat ons een paar woorde kan praat oor die Securitas Napsu privaatskoel en naweek van 2025. Uit soos die plek en privaatskoel Morea is recht vir julle. Ons het al reeds begin met ons beplannings vir hierdie groot geleentheid vir volgende jaar en ons het al in die einde van laas jaar begin om ons faciliteite te verbeter en weer op standaard te kry. Amal het ons vraagtekens oor verblijf op die platteland, maar ons wil julle versekering gee, daar sal genoeg wees. En ons weet dat finansies ons een groot uitdaging is vir amal, maar ons gaan het vir julle die moeite waard maak. Aan privaatskoel Morea sy skoolgemeenskap en oudsoos sy gemeenskap beplan om groot te gaan vir die Securitas Napsu privaatskoel in Havik van 2025. Hier is een speciale geleentheid en dit is dan ook een speciale jaar vir ons om het aan te bied, maar net so is dit dan ook een speciale geleentheid vir Afrikaans as taal. En soos julle weet is Afrikaans volgende jaar 100 jaar oud en Afrikaners is plesierig en dit kan julle gloe. En daarom wil ons julle uitnooi om volgende jaar saam met ons te kom feestvier. Kom proef een oudsoe op 30 april tot 3 mei en merk dit so lang op julle kalender vir volgende jaar. Ons wacht vir julle. Stay with us as we bring you economic news shortly. Introducing 061 Express, brought to you by Synergy in proud partnership with Vintage Express. Here's your chance to make your voice heard to celebrate the businesses that make Vintage exceptional. From your favorite coffee spot to the salon that always gets your style just right. It's time to shine a spotlight on the gems of our city. Over the next eight weeks, it's your chance to vote for your favorites to recognize the best of the best. Nominations open on the 21st of April and close on the 5th of May. To nominate your favorite business, simply save this number, 085-785-6231. And WhatsApp hashtag 061 Express or scan the QR code below and follow the on-screen instructions. By nominating your favorites, you're not only supporting local businesses, but you also stand a chance to win your share of 50,000 Namibian dollars in cash. The voting process will be the same as the nominations process, using the Synergy chatbot and the hashtag 061 Express. Voting opens on June 5th and closes on June 23rd. Make sure to cast your vote for the best of the best. The winners will be announced on 
June 28th, 061 Express, celebrating the heartbeat of Ventuk. Get ready to make your mark. In our economic news tonight, Nampawa nears the 2.6 billion funding for the House Cockerbomb project. Well, the local uh, Namibia Local Business Association Vice President Kanu Amadila has asked the Ministry of Mines to urgently deal with the illegal fuel smuggling taking place in the north, saying many forecourts run the risk of being bankrupt. Have a look. For Minister, another point, another burning point, burning deeply, is that fuel smuggling from Angola into Namibia continue not only destroying our economy, but it left many businesses closed, especially in the north, and a lot of people lost employment. A lot of service stations across the border in the north, across the border towns in the north, have closed down. We have already engaged the minister and we called the minister. We had a meeting with him in Alomba at Toshikango and we went even to see Ngungula with the minister. He promised us that he was going to come back to us. He was going to address it so to see what are the possible measures to address it until, until today. Until today. The then, if nothing can be done, I tell you, many entrepreneurs borrowed money to put up those service stations to create employment. Now the service stations are closed. The financial institutions are behind them. They cannot repay their loan. And nothing can be done. That is just what we are hearing. Nothing can be done. Okay. Let's have a look at our economic indicators. The Namibian dollar trades for 23 Namibian dollars 12 cents to 1 British pound, 18 Namibian dollars at 19 in 80, 90 Namibian dollars rather 88 cents to 1 euro, 80 Namibian dollars at 45 cents to 1 US dollar, 2 Namibian dollars 56 cents gets you one Chinese one. Three commodities have increased, that is gold with 1.10%, platinum with 3.05%, copper with 0.28%, while Brent crude oil has dropped with 0.65%. In international news tonight, the cargo ship Costco Shipping Argentina loaded with exports goods from Beijing, Taijin and Hebei province on Monday departed Taijin port to ports in South America, marking the opening of the first direct route from China's Jingjinjin region to the east coast of South America. The new route will be operated by 12 uh, by 12 and 14,000 tube container ship every week, which will provide a more convenient sea channel for the import of soybeans, iron ore, coffee beans, sugar, beef and other products from South America and the exports of domestic daily necessities, chemicals, automobiles and parts. Let's have a look at the weather predictions for tomorrow. Katima Mulilo can expect a minimum of 18 degrees, Rakana 16 degrees as well as a Nana, while Ochoarongo and Omaruru as well as Ventuk and Khobabes can expect a minimum of 15 degrees. Hentis Bay can expect a maximum of 19 degrees, while Kate Manshwap can expect a maximum of 28 degrees, Aranosa 32 maximum, Ludrates 25 maximum, and Aram's Flay just a little bit higher than Ludrates with 26 degrees. 
And now we take a look at the sports package courtesy of Sports Rep. Good evening and welcome to the Sunset New Sports section. I'm Jesse Jackson Kauraifa. Brave Warriors coach Colin Benjamin announced 52 players as preliminary squad in preparations for the Brave Warriors World Cup qualifiers against Liberia and Tunisia as well as the upcoming Kosafa tournament. It is crunch time for the Southern Stream First Division title contenders with only one of 12 teams coming in contention for promotion to the Depp Marine Namibia Premier Football League as this season draws to a close. Namibia Correctional Severs will cross that is on 19 May at Mondesa Stadium in what promises to be a mouth-watering affair and a possible title decider. The pressure is on both teams to secure the sole right of the promotion. The second division football club, Young Braves FC Kid, has been reportedly stolen. The kid was reported missing from their camping house at Ehenye in Oshakati. The team that plays in the northern second division allegedly lost a whole bag of jerseys and trousers after a young boy team member forgot to carry the bag. The team coach, Itan Kambalala, confirmed the incident with sport rep. The team was all confirmed that they have opened a case with the Namibian police at Oshakati. The kit is white with red stripes. The words on Dangwa Town Council appears in front while the club's name Young Brave is written at the back. That is all we had for you tonight. Good evening. And with that, we've come to the end of tonight's broadcast. Make sure you join Sunset News on Facebook, on all NMH platforms on our weekdays, as well as on our website, which is called oneup2.com. Sunset News screens on DSTV 285, as well as Go TV Channel 25, every weekday from 7.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. This has been Sunset News. Please don't end your day without us. Good night.